So uh, what I want to show you is just really quickly the, the uh, experience of building a Cumulo cluster from scratch, uh, dropping some data in, taking a quick look at analytics, and then we'll look at an example of, a, of one of the big systems uh, that we have out there. So um, let me start. This is our EULA. I hope you're absorbing this <laughs> because everyone needs to say yes in unison right now. Just kidding. OK, so um, super simple to create a scale-out storage system with Cumulo. Uh, choose a cluster name uh, someplace in here. Choose a password. Great. It'll say, you sure you really want to do that? So the, the nodes all talk to each other via IPv6 across Ethernet, uh, as we discussed before. So they find each other. They, they say, hey, would you like us to join uh, to create a cluster together? You say yes. And then that's the end of the story. Now you have a, a storage system up. It comes with a couple of different uh, default mount points. Uh, administration is really easy. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to waltz right past that. And What's um, the constructs of the web page? Is it Flash, Java, HTML5? And this is all HTML5. All right. Good, we hate Flash <laughs> and Java. <laughs> OK. So all I'm going to do is just uh, uh, mount the system. In this case, uh, via SMB, and then just drop some data in, and then we'll take a, a look at analytics. OK, so we'll copy one of those in, and uh, we will, uh, that's a, we don't want that. We want this. We'll copy one of those in as well. So um, this is running on four virtual machines on my laptop at this point. Um, so. Uh, May not be You're the fastest thing man. in the world. I'm sorry? You're a brave man. Yeah, so, uh, you know, why not do a demo that way? Um, after a little while, my laptop's fan will start going crazy and so forth. But, you know, it works. Uh, and uh, um, let's take a look at what the system has to say about what's going on. So I'll start off by, um, actually, let me switch back to the dashboard and say, you know, when you, when you administer a typical storage system, and someone starts doing something that's creating a huge amount of I.O. load. Turns out for virtual machines, a few hundred IOPS is a huge amount of I.O. load. You may wonder, OK, what, what's actually going on? What, uh, my IOPS just spiked, and what's going on? And this is a problem that we found faces many users of storage systems. It's sort of the blank screen effect. Right? You know, I know it got busy. It's telling me it got really busy. It might tell me stuff about latency or something. I know I've got a problem, but I don't know what the problem is. And what we found is that lots of folks um, who administer these sorts of systems will build systems to go explore the periphery of their network and look for what clients are doing what things and then try and work back to what's the root, uh, what's the root cause of all this load. And, and uh, you know, that problem isn't that exciting um, on a Monday afternoon. It's particularly not exciting uh, on Sunday night. Um, it's just no fun to go try and figure out what, what's going on when, uh, when the system's not telling you anything. So. Um, we built a lot of analytics functionality into our product that helps people understand both load and also capacity. So starting with um, this view called uh, IOPS Hotspots, you can see, um, uh, hard to see the diagram, but you can, you can just see it's a Sankey diagram of um, not just the IOPS, but actually where in the file system those IOPS are being applied. If you want to know what, what data is actually being accessed, this gives you a visual view of where all of the I.O. flows are in the system. And this can pretty quickly tell you, OK, it's this area. It's these projects that are getting worked on. It's these types of files. Uh, and, and possibly it's going to give you a clue about user. But if it doesn't give you a, cute, uh, sorry, a clue about user, um, you can come and look at what the busy files are on the system. And then you can go from uh, individual file and say, OK, great. Um, this is one of the files that's being accessed a lot, and what, what IP address is accessing that. So you can get back to IP address from there, um, obviously in the presence of DNS. At, you at what rate is this name. at? This is being updated um, really about uh, just every few seconds, and then it decays. Um, the, the intensity of operation decays over a course of about a minute or something. So you'll if see I things that have been all going my on. phone calls on Sunday night, right? and I still want to go back and see what was the hot files or paths. Yep. How do I see historicals? So, so uh, you can extract the data continuously through our REST API and go back and look um, and go back and look historically. We don't through our UI oh, today. Yeah, a offer scroll the, bar we for don't history. Offer that today, right? Um, we do uh, basic capacity analytics. So you can see capacity at, at points in history. Everyone uh, does that. Yeah, uh, not quite the way we do it, but that's yeah. But still, cool. yeah. If if you're selling yourself on the analytical platform and expecting 
a storage admin or a backup admin to do API calls and do analytics on an external factor. Right. But you, they're say, not going to be able to. I don't want to argue with you, but but here's where we have to know our customers, mm. because our customers typically deploy many petabytes of data storage, and they do build a lot of infrastructure around uh, the infrastructure that they decide to deploy. And so uh, a lot of times we're actually replacing substantially a lot of, of homegrown code, and so we're a different place to plug into on, on some of that but stuff. But you're making them generate more homegrown code for very uh, basic typically analysis. The interface level will exist, and then, the, and then their implementation is going to get removed in the process. But you, you, I mean, point taken. You're right. I mean, uh, there, it would be crazy of us not to move forward and, and add this information historically, just in a way that's built into the product. Um, so uh, the other thing that you can see in a Cumulus system just instantaneously all the time is a view of where all capacity is consumed in a system. So this is a, a it's not a tree map, it's a, uh, a th each of these boxes corresponds to a directory and the area of the, of the box corresponds to how much capacity is consumed in that area of the tree. And then overlaid with that is how much performance is being consumed in that area of the file system tree at any given point in time. So Aaron described DU as a use case. You can go and you can see how many files and directories are in this area of the tree and you can go go take a look uh, and see what's going on. We have just one minute left, so I'll just show you one more thing before we go, and that is this. Um, we built these systems to scale. Scale's the first thing. If it doesn't scale, it's not really a thing for us. Uh, and so um, this uh, happens to be a system that we have. This is a, one of our smallest systems uh, that today has, let's see, uh, today has 9.2 billion files on it. Uh, the, File size, average file size, I think, is 1K or something in the system. So we built all of these analytic uh, functions to work at great scale. So you can, um, you can get this uh, instant insight about what's going on across your capacity footprint um, at, at extremely large scale uh, very, very easily. What's the largest cluster you've built, either in the lab or in production? Lab or in production. So the, the largest system uh, is about four petabytes. Okay. And uh, is we that what the 24s will or the significantly 208s? expand that 208s. We'll significantly expand that over the next year. What is that in nodes? 20 nodes. And how many billion files is the most you've seen? Uh, this this is the biggest number of files that of any system we uh, regularly work with. 10 billion. Um, I would love it in the next couple of years if we do a trillion file system, but it'll take a while uh, to uh, have the capital to allocate to that project and also to fill it up. It's a lot of files. So are, are most of your existing customers in the usual suspect markets that are really more large file? Um, yeah, by and large, uh, most of our customers are in large file environments, but we have a significant number in smaller file uh, environments as well. And that's because it's really hard to build a big storage system that can handle a very large number of small files. And so uh, we offer a solution as, that can do as that. As you of all people well know. Cause, yes, cause because, that, because, because that last uh, one isn't really good at that. It's not, that's not what that's for, right? So, or it, it's not what it was designed for. Yeah. How far back are you keeping your analytics on board? Uh, I think it depends on the data. And, and the other part of the question is I don't know. Do you know the answer to that, Aaron? Uh, the, 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 the longest. Uh, back we, we keep is about a year okay. um, in that, but but right now we keep a small subset of the data historically, and we're and we're expanding the amount of historical data that we keep going forward. 